In game development, it's always really hard to work your way up to get to a point of power and stature within a game's development where you're able to make the calls and the decisions. So when you have that chance, you want to hold on to it as much as you can. That's why when I heard this news of this upcoming Xbox game having a major departure happen, it kind of set me back going, oh no, are we having another one? And that major departure at the Microsoft Studios would be Fable 4's narrative lead announces their departure. This is concerning as Fable is a story-driven game. So when your lead writer decides to go, you know what, I don't want my name on this, that is concerning when they just want to bounce out. They've already put years of work and effort into putting this game together to just leave like a year or two before the release of the game. That's concerning. We've seen this before. When we saw Halo Infinite's creative director and campaign lead leave the game before the release of Halo Infinite, that was really concerning. Now that hindsight's 2020, we understand the troubled development Halo Infinite went through. Or how about when Drew Karpishian left Bioware for a second time right before the release of Anthem back in 2018? How about when Mass Effect Andromeda's lead writer also left for Bungie, so they left for another job, but then you find that they were only working there for just a short period of time before Andromeda's launch. They only worked there for five months. They're like, you know what? I'm out of here. I don't want to be part of this. And well, we know how Andromeda turned out. Or how about of all people who would leave this studio, Joseph Zane leaving Bungie back in 2013. This was before the release of Destiny, which we all know how the story of Destiny turned out. So when we see Anna Mego leaving Playground Studios for just no reason, apparently, as she stated on Twitter that she's you know, leaving and doesn't really sound like she has any plan of what to do next, which is kind of interesting. Besides following up with her own books that she wrote. I just start seeing red flags when I see something like this happen just like a few years before the launch of a game. Because we've been through this before. We all know much about this. If you've been a follower on this channel for a long time, we followed a lot of Halo Infinite news in detail and the mass departures that came from 343. All, so many lead positions just left the game before the launch of the game and many after because of not being happy with how the development process was going for Halo Infinite. Matt Gill even stated here saying that working on Fable was a dream come true and it was wrenching to leave it behind. So when you see developers leaving without much of a catch net to where their next job is going to be at least announced, that's when you start getting some concerns like you're just leaving because you just don't want to be associated with this project. I just feel like we've been down this road many times before with many other games in the past that we've covered personally here on the channel as well. This news also comes off of the heels of the recent reveal of Fable, which from Xbox fans wasn't really recepted very well as the trailer itself was good. Yes, I totally agree with that. It was a fun trailer to watch, good way to open up the Xbox game showcase. But interesting thing here, if you pause this video, you can look at down below. The like to dislike ratio is just above 50% likes, which before that was actually much lower. It's been upvoted since it became a little bit of news a while back. The main complaint people had with this trailer was the fact that they kind of said that there was gameplay involved with this trailer where if you're an unknowing eye or an untrained eye, you probably would go, well, where was the gameplay? It turns out there were tiny little snippets of actual gameplay involved with this trailer. I saw this trailer the 50% speed, so you can see what I'm talking about, where like right here, that's supposedly gameplay right here at the moment, which again, like I had to slow this down to 50% speed just so you actually would notice it. More negative sentiment from people saying that this game is not gonna look this good at launch, which we've definitely been bamboozled in the past, but developers are saying, this game is looking this good. Lucas Coles, who is the lead lighting artist over at Playground Games, does say that people not believing this is real or the game will look like this is one of the biggest compliments, hashtag Fable, which yeah, like if a game actually does look this good while playing it, that's an incredible feat and something that needs to be praised. But I'm just saying we've been so bamboozled so many times in the past when it comes to these gameplay trailers, especially since this is much more of a cinematic trailer rather than a gameplay trailer, even though they said there was gameplay in it, I wouldn't really count it that. One of the most obvious examples of this, it might be a bit of a throwback, it is, but it does show that it still happens and it has continued to happen when it comes to something like this, where I remember when Watch Dogs was gonna be held as one of the graphically most impressive games, where on the left side here is what we got showing at E3, and the right side here is what we got here 
for the actual release. And you can see the clear difference in the shadowing, the lighting, the details, the texturing is way different compared to what we had at E3 compared to at the actual release of the game. And this adds on top of the concerns we've had previously on top of that, which was that Fable is using the same engine as Forza Motorsport. So apparently Playground Games is part of like Turn 10 and vice versa over at Xbox Game Studios. So a lot of people over at Playground Games are very familiar with this engine, which is important to understand because Forza uses their own special motorsports engine for the game specifically. But when you try to make like a racing game engine and then bring it over to like a story driven RPG cinematic kind of game, that's two completely different things, which we've seen this in the past as well when it came to say Mass Effect Andromeda or EA's biggest push when they tried to make Frostbite like the EA engine, try to take it from Battlefield, which is a first person shooter, and they try to put it over to say Mass Effect Andromeda. There were a lot of technical difficulties that were happening right there, which caused Andromeda to suffer. Same thing happened as well when it came to Anthem, where they tried using Frostbite for Anthem and the engine they cited was an issue as it just not designed to make a game like that. So it feels like never ending waves of PTSD keep hitting Fable. Now is this enough information to go, you know what, Fable is most likely going to crash and burn. There's no point in keeping an interest in with this, even though it's going to be one of the Xbox's largest game releases when it does release. I would say no, I still have high hopes for this game. I still plan on playing Fable when it does come out, but it just matters of how it's going to release. If we've been used to this modern gaming tech now where basically a game releases kind of buggy, kind it works well enough to where you can put it out the minimum viable product and as gamers we're just kind of getting a little fed up with this whole process we just want something that just works as intended out of the box it's a really high ask i know when it comes to development because video games are very difficult to make but ultimately you're selling consumers a product and they have intentions of how that product should work based on your advertisements. Also with Xbox's title of Perfect Dark being rebooted again and again and again, we're still years away from the release of that game, even though that was announced back in 2020, it just seems like another Xbox studio having problems again with development and trying to get the product ready to go. Which if you haven't seen my video talking about this Perfect Dark development, it is crazy. I'll leave it in the pinned comment for you guys to check out if you'd like. I still have high hopes for Fable. I still think it's on a decent trajectory from all the news we've heard overall, but I'm starting to see things pop up, which usually do start to happen a year or two before the release of the game is when some dirty laundry starts coming out. Because when your narrative lead leaves a game like Fable, which is very narratively driven, well, that's when I start having concerns and start having PTSD of hearing the similar type of news story in the past and how those games actually launched. As soon as we know more information about Fable's development and also more news on Xbox, we'll make sure you subscribe to the channel because we'll be talking about it here on the channel.